you know, briefly. Yeah, go you know, ahead. Start off, I, I wanted to start off by, you know, talking about um, kind of the level three, level four standards. The, the, the level three uh, is, is recognized around the world and it's a very, you know, it's kind of like you need to be a full-time skier, a teacher, you have to have a lot of experience. And I think there's a lot of, a lot of similarities with some of the movements. Just when we get to the level four, we start to refine those movement patterns and they become much more consistent in all terrain, you know, whether it gets steeper or the snow conditions start to get a little bit uh, dicier, you know, a little bit more broken up and not, not so consistent that you've got the ability to make the changes and adapt a, a little quicker. That's what happens at the level four level. Um, when, you know, uh, through the years, um, we've watched, you know, I, I've got 30 years of teaching a level four course and we, we bring in different ski offs and we, we remove different ski offs based on uh, the relevance and the time. And there's always, always kind of changing situations, you know, um, also different administrations that are running the Alliance, put different emphasis on different things. But the one thing that stays common throughout is, uh, is we have, well, we have a, uh, a skills-based um, technical model. And, and really what that says is we, we break skiing down into movement patterns. So the, the body can make certain movements and often those movements have associated feelings so we can regulate what that movement feels like. And it doesn't matter what ski off maneuver you do, whether it's long turns or short turns or, or bumps, or whether it's a hockey stop or bricage. Uh, uh, these, all these different maneuvers that we ask you to do, generally uh, they're, they're there. They're there to, um, for, for the course conductors to watch how you um, manage your skills. So how your body movements go based on the situation that you're presented with. Right? So that's, that's all it is. And over the years, what I've done is I've, um, I, I said to people, I said, we don't, I don't, if you come into my class, I train the skills. I don't train the maneuver. We take the skills and go into the maneuver, but sometimes we do something else, which will highlight that um, skill, you know, isolate it, and then we develop it and we refine it. And, and that's the same as that's the same as any lesson that you do is you watch a skier ski and they ski a predetermined turn shape or size on a piece of terrain. And then as a teacher, you take you take that skier and go, oh, they need they need to work on uh, the pressure control for after vertical pressure control. That's one of the, the skills. They need to work on upper and lower body separation or the rotary motion turning the leg. That's upper and lower body separation. They need to be able to do that, you know, more or less. They need to be able to refine it. Or uh, they need to be able to edge the ski. They need to be able to edge the ski a little bit with the ankle and with the hip and, and with inclination and with angulation. And when you master those skills and, and they're, they, Everybody can do them to a certain ability level. And in certain situations, we're more comfortable doing them or we're less comfortable doing them. So our job as a teacher is to make you more comfortable. And with experience, when, when you gain a lot of experience working with students, you understand generally, not, not always does it work, but for the most times, you learn how to develop those skills better. And, mm -hmm. and that's... When I, when I have the Jasper, when, I, when we do our high performance ski camps in Jasper, that's what I want to do. I want to take those skills. I want to put you in a situation that you're uncomfortable with, refine it, get it better, put it back in your ski and make you better. And that's what the level four standard is. So the level three standard is, is at one level of those skills. And the level four level is a, is a higher competency of those uh, same skills. To get there, the only difference is guided training. That's, you know, I'm, I'm trying to really simplify it, but in, in essence, 
Um, that's what it is. Um, now, Lulu, can I share my screen? I've, I've got those videos. I don't think you can. I think you can. I've granted you the co-host authorizations, so you can do whatever you want. Okay, I'm going to try to do that. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Excellent. Uh, let's see what I got here. No, that's not it. This is it. And this comes off of uh, this comes off of uh, Instagram, and this fellow's skier is uh, is Patrick Bates. He's not the one, the one I really want you to watch. But we're going to start off with Patrick. Hey, Otto. And, yes. Otto. Currently, we can see your email box. We couldn't see the the video. And I will recommend you just click the share uh, screen button again, and then select the window you want to share. And if you uh, can see a green box around that window, that is a window that all of us can see. Can you see this here, here now? Here we go. Ah, yeah, yeah that's okay. good. Okay, good. I'm not. I'm, I'm relying <laughs> on uh, my experts here on the the call. I'm, I'm more of a technician on skiing. So Patrick Bates, you can see uh, the name here. And if you search him on Instagram, he's got, he's got a lot of videos on there. He does a lot of off-piece stuff. He doesn't do a lot of um, on-piece stuff, but the stuff that he does on-piece, I think, is some of the best technical skiing uh, out there. Japanese technical skiing is, is really good as well. So here, let's just watch the video here. Okay, so did you like that? Now he bends, yeah, definitely. He, bends, he bends a little bit more <clears throat> than our standard skier does. He, and, he, and he's maybe at the lower end of it, but I personally don't think there's anything wrong with his skiing. So I'm, I'm just gonna mention a few things. Um, uh, he bends to switch early earlier on on the the call and you said, oh, I'm working on my switch. The way Patrick switches or the other, the next video we're going to see is uh, Valentina. And she's the one that is, is, I, is I like, I really like her skiing. They, they bend the switch. And, and so a couple of things here, if I just look at the picture on the screen there, his weight is more at, during the switch to bend his legs, his weight has to go a little bit back of the arch to the, just to the front of the heel pad a little bit. Okay, um, so he moves four and a half to start the turn. He'll move on just to the back of the ball. The the, the expert skier pressure is vertical, is real subtle, and and it's also very subtle back and forth. He bends all of his joints, so he uses all his joints. If you watch some skiers, they make the switch. It seems like magic. They don't bend their legs. Um, the other thing is, if we watch him. He has upper and lower body separation. So right here, um, I don't want you to look at his arms. I want you to look at his body. His body is not moving. His legs are turning. His skis are turning. Right? So if I look at uh, his body is facing towards you in the screen. And his skis are pointed kind of down the hill or across the screen a little bit. Now, Patrick and the other girl, arms, they're a little bit kind of all over the map, they're all loose. And when sometimes we watch, this looseness is okay because it doesn't affect, this is an expert skier. So we have upper and lower body separation, his arms are free. Ideally they would be in a set position, but the arms shouldn't affect the upper body. The other thing that I want you to look at, and it doesn't happen all the time, but his legs are parallel, especially, if I look at the tib fibs or the lower segment of his leg, 
kind of in, in this range. I don't know if you see my little cursor, his legs there. Yep. He has parallel legs. Right? And then lastly, his hips, he uses his hips to edge. And he can use them because he stays low and then he inclines rapidly at the start of the turn. He uses his hip to edge. He doesn't use his knee. He's not driving with the knee because if he drives with the knee, what that does is causes um, his hip to actually reverse and go outside the turn where he wants it inside the turn. Okay. So the hip gets close. Okay. Okay. So I am going to try another one. Uh, okay. okay. Where is everybody? Where's my share screen? Yeah. Can you? So if can you see no it? Can you from your it? end, can you just uh, mute your? You mute from your side. Okay, sorry, Otto, go ahead. Okay, I wanna share, let's see. Yes, here we go. Okay, I'm getting the hang of it. I'm a little slow still. So this is Valentina, Valentina Frankhauser. She's on um, Instagram as well. And we're gonna look at a lot of the same things. She, she makes a nice, okay. She bends to switch. She uses her range of motion pull extension. She bends to switch, okay? Pressure forward here early in the turn. And then as she bends here, comes back a little bit to the heels, okay? Right? Uh, she has great upper and lower body separation. So you see her body face towards the outside of the turn. The turning is led by her, her legs. When you drive a car, you turn the wheels of the car and then upper bo the body of the car follows. So she's not turning with her upper body. Now her hands, her inside hand here, right hand's a little bit loose. Okay, nice hands at the crossover though. Watch, she, she kind of punches both of them forward here. But the arms again are independent. If, if she kept her right arm up here a little bit, she would have a little bit more weight on the outside ski. That's my only little thing to pick, pickiness about her. But this girl skis better than anybody we have in Canada, male or female in the Alliance, okay? Look at the parallel leg action here. Her legs are parallel as they go across and you can see the skis are well, parallel edges, okay? So they're both identical, okay? <laughs> I, w I wish I'd met this girl when I was 20. Okay. She uses her hips to edge. Look, you know, as she crosses over, her legs go to the side and her hip goes in. Look how close to the ground her hips get at the end of the turn, right? And then there's a nice bend in the upper body so that she main maintains her weight um, uh, over the outside ski. I'm gonna show you one more. And this is the inspirational part of our, our chat. So just bear with me here. Where did you guys go? I always these. There you go. And share screen, pick her up. Okay, here's uh, Valentina again. This is in, now in fast motion, okay? And, you know, if you look at the track that she left, it would be like a railway track. It would be, be perfect all the way down. It doesn't get wider once he doesn't get wider, okay? So she, I think she lives with her, her boyfriend is Patrick, the other guy. And they, you can see they ski very similar, right? And she was uh, an ex-Europa Cup skier. So she, again, you know, as she bends to switch, she's got subtle pressure fore and aft. 
upper and lower body separation. You know, there's that independence. Her arms uh, a little free, but that's okay. Parallel legs to move in, right? Well, that skill set, and that skill set is very refined in this environment now. And use them appropriately in other situations. And and this, this is is I I would probably give this a nine point nine five on a level four exam. You know, definitely definitely a, a nine or ten is, is where I would put this skiing at if she came down on a on a medium. That's probably a medium sized turn, right, Paul? Um, yeah. Anyways, so Valentina Frankhauser. Uh, this is Instagram, her Instagram account. Uh, join us. She's got a couple thousand followers. I've mentioned it to a lot of people. So, uh, you want to see that again, or you want to move on? I can't hear anybody. Yeah, we can replay it. So yeah. replay one more one more time. Yeah. I never see enough of it. Put that inside your head, and that's that's how we're going to ski tomorrow, all of us. I think we, I need to ski it every morning. Look, at, watch it every morning. You know, that's what's so great. Like that's a 15, 20 second clip on Instagram. You know, you're riding riding a lift. You pull that up. You know, have that in your favorites there, and uh, and and watch that. I, I think that's um, you know an awesome jump. Now that's carving. That's one that's one situation. So. You know, you've got to go, okay, if I'm doing short turns, I'm going to turn my legs a little bit more or longer turn, I'm going to hang on, you know, take it across the hill a little bit more, that kind of thing. But she's got a very refined set of skills in there, right? And, um, you know, we have we have three sets of skills and, and I kind of broke it down into a couple of areas of each skill. And and the, th the same thing, you know, if I, if, I, um, if I go into Paul's book here, you know, and I very early on in, uh, Paul's book he's got skiing basics and Paul Paul uses you know the turning effort and he Paul talks about turning the lower body and he talks about uh edging edging um through angulation right which is is the hip um and then he's got well vertical separation and he's got uh steering right and I think he's got uh, balance center of mass and base of support early on he's got he uses sometimes a uh, weight transfer. He, Paul uses um, uh, different words to describe the same things, and that's okay, right? Um, you know, if if we if we talk to the Austrians or I talk to the Swiss or the Americans or um, you know, that's the 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 teaching portion of the level four is is if we understand that skiing is broken down in these areas. And in the Canadian system, we try to use that similar language on an exam. But all I'm trying to do is change somebody's movement pattern, okay? Um, and it's the communication and how I communicate that. And the more, the more words or the variety of words that you have to communicate it kind of into those three buckets of skills we have, the, the better teacher you can become because it depends upon how technical your skier is or where they're from or, you know, the lay words or, or some people just understand a, a, a different uh, use of words um, to help them get there. And that, that then becomes the, the level four teaching standard, right? Where you, you've got a, a good grasp and a good understanding and you break their skiing down into the, what that skill is and then you separate it out, you know, and you use a, a bricage exercise to develop upper and lower body separation. Or you might use a high-speed javelin turn to, to develop um, edge angle while remaining separate, right? You know, or you might use dolphin turns to work on some four-aft balance. So, and you're expert and you, you take that drill and you work on the skill within the drill, skill drill matching. And then you take that refined skill and you put it back into skiing to achieve your goal again. You know, and I, I try to I, I make it real simple because at the end of the day, it is. The only thing that's difficult is when we actually get out there and try to work with it. 
there's many little steps along the way. Okay. Um, one, one more. Uh, I got to get one more video or one more screen up, right? Okay. Here we go. Lynn asked me to talk about this one. Uh, and I, and I, uh, and Paul, you know, you're silent and quiet, so you can, can feel free to weigh in at any time. This is uh, over over the many years we've had different manuals and different ways of trying to talk about teaching and about skiing and about how to think about skiing and and that's that the verbal way and I think the more the more people you're exposed to and the more ways that people talk about skiing and technique the better off you are in in helping you understand it and this is just another model of that. Uh, at the level four level, or you know, if you're a, a level one examiner, understanding this model is part of kind of the knowledge that you need to have, and then you need to pass this knowledge on to the student. And at the heart of it here is uh, decision making. And when when you, as a skier, if you think about it, and you go down the hill, the decisions that you make. There's a lot of decisions you make. You're probably not even conscious of it. Where you're going to turn, when you're going to turn, how much you're going to turn. Well, how much am I going to edge? Am I going to angulate? Am I going to incline? Uh, where's my weight? Is it forward or is it back? And these things happen because it's different if you hit a bit of powder snow or if you hit a, a lot of powder snow, right? Or if you ski and those soft ones. different and look at the decision making and if you can understand the decisions that you you make uh, along the way then you can start to communicate um, those to other people okay so that's that's really at the heart of the skier you 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 the individual skier going down the hill now uh, these these other three you know uh, when I did course conductor training, I had a couple of different, we, we talked about it and some people said, well, I have to do this one first or this one first or that one first. And I don't, I think they're all kind of symbiotic and you can go any which way you want around this, this thing. Skill movements, the, the, this bottom corner here are skier movements. Um, these really are the skills. So the skier, the skier makes a, a movement pattern and it might be moving forward on the ski or back or vertically up or, you know, hip goes in or I'm going to turn my skis. So those are the, the, the skills, you know, that you, and, and as a teacher, I have to get my student to change that their motor pattern or how they move. <clears throat> but when you make a movement, then what happens is your ski then does something. So if I turn my skis like this, they might slide, but if I turn my skis and edge them, they're gonna get some grip, okay, right? So I turn, this is the action, it's just turning and edging them. Then the next phase is uh, ski to snow interaction at the top. If edge, my skis are gonna, and if I turn a little bit, they're gonna carve uh, like Valentina. If I, if I turn them a lot and don't edge them, they may slide, all right? Okay, but it all started with the movements that I made that created something for ski to do something that when they react with the snow, there's an outcome, right? And that was the decision that skier made. Mm. Now, as a teacher, you can do a couple of things. You can work this in reverse. So you can look at how the, the ski, right? If, if I'm looking at a student and I see them slide across the snow, I go, okay, their skis are turned and they're not edged. I've got to get them to edge the skis more. So I, I, I can work back. Sometimes I may not see it 
it's in powder snow exactly what the skis are doing. So I may look at the skier movements, right? Or I might follow them and I might, I might see what it's happening on the snow, but then I want to see what the ski action totally is. So these are these, this outer circle, right? Allows you to see what's happening. And the, the middle part is the decision that skier made, but that's also part as a teacher in goal setting. I go, what, what is your goal and what is the decision that you want to make? Sometimes I have to feed them that information. I have to say, well, in bumps, I got to go slower. So I got to turn more, right? Because I don't want to, on the steep bump pitch, I don't want to go fast. So, so um, I'm going to leave it at there. I'm going to have two things. Does anybody have any questions on this? Because I know there's some confusion. Uh, and, I, and I hopefully related it to the standards. And I've got Paul here to back me up. So I'm going to open the floor. This is my lecture, Lynn, I've done. If there aren't any questions, um, I'll just put a, a few comments in here. Uh, I think that's a really good presentation of what this diagram represents. And it's funny that um, every time that we see something new, uh, be it one season or two seasons or whatever, um, we, we tend to say, hey, well, what, what's the difference between what we're doing now and, and how we look at it and, and how we looked at it last season or the season before. So um, to simplify here and not to repeat anything that Otto has uh, said uh, in his uh, description, there's a connection, regardless of how you look at this diagram between the movements that the body makes and the effect that they have on the ski. So if we turn the legs or we turn the feet, the skis will turn as well. If we angle the legs over, the ski will tip and it will go up onto edge. So um, to, to simplify this, um, it's to try to connect the body movements, the effect they have in the ski. And as we look at the skier, maybe we can look at the ski and see what the ski is doing, uh, whether it's moving left and right, uh, whether no, no, no. it's tipping up or down, um, whether the tip is off the snow, um, and, and look up a little bit Not higher and, and see what body no, no. is causing that ski action. Um, and, and I think that when we talk about level three and four, if you can start to connect what the body's doing and what the ski is doing and vice versa, that's where the strength comes in. And, and that's where the understanding really starts to, to grow within you, but it shows um, uh, to anyone who's watching and listening. Uh, when we look at level one and two, uh, the body could be doing certain things. Uh, the hands are up, the, the hips are a little too open, uh, the shoulders tipped. Okay, great. Uh, and, and we can correct those and, and see an improvement. But uh, as uh, Otto alluded to earlier on, uh, level three and four is really understanding the process of evolution of, of how these things work together. So when we look at Patrick and his girlfriend, it's funny, Otto, you said um, uh, you're a fan of, of, of Patrick, and so am I. Uh, I actually have him in my phone. I'll show you. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. This is a, a really difficult exercise that he does very well. But I have a bunch of his videos in my phone, and Lynn, you mentioned it too. I look at those often. I look at those before I go skiing. I look at those after I go skiing. And um, I, I look at what the skis are doing and, and how he's making that happen. And um, anyhow, I, to relate that back to, to this diagram, uh, level three and four is, is to really have uh, not, not Patrick's depth of understanding, but enough to know, hey, the skis and the legs are parallel. The edging happens early. And, and this is how it happens. So if it's not happening in the skier, Let's try to make that happen at this advanced and expert level. You know, some like uh, very good points, Paul. You know, we use a model like this and, and we do compare to the past. It's about, it's about having discussions about this ongoing and just becoming familiar with it. And then that's what takes the mystique out of it. There's no mystique in here. Um, even though there seems to, with something new, we, we get that confusion, uh, but through discussion, 
we start to understand it. And once we start to understand it, it then simplifies it. And that is, that is a normal learning process. So hopefully this helps a little bit, just talking about these things. And the more you talk about it with your peers or with your coaches or, or you know, on a call like this, hopefully that starts to demystify it. Is there any questions? Uh, well, this is Lulu. Uh, I think it's a it's less of a question, but uh, I just try to confer my my practice about what getting used to this new uh, uh, the model. So, in my in my understanding, well, we do the assessment. We we do the assessment, and we do the um, uh, suggestion or tips to to correct or improve. So during the assessment, I'm trying to start from the ski and snow interaction. So observe what happens between the skis and the snow. Then this will lead to how the ski act caused this uh, snow ski interaction. And then it gets back to the skier movement then next phase when when we uh, when I try to give uh, give some tips or try to make suggestion to the skier, we start from the skier movement, which is very um, uh, uh, approachable. So he can my tip or my suggestion will be very direct. So this body of uh, this body part, what. Maybe you can try what kind of a movement at the, which phase of the term. Then also we want to make it uh, clear that this movement is meant to cause what kind of a ski action change and further to the eventually the ski and the snow interaction be affected. So for students, for learners, especially the thinkers, they know they know why basically h5w they know why they, they should do this and they they got a tip how to do it and they also know um, what effect they should expect expect so then when we talk about the, their uh, their think their feeling before and after this this uh, new learning motor they will feel the difference. So I think that's that's a way to break into their their learning cycle. I just want to confirm that that's the right cycle. That that yes and no. A lot of this happens simultaneously, and sometimes putting it in a a step by step process. What that does, uh, Lulu, is that allows us to uh, internalize it and think about it a little bit. And to analyze it and to break it down. Uh, um, so yes, you know, at the end of the day, yes, that that's correct. It's, that's how it's going to work. Um, now, when your skis are bare, Or if they're all, you're falling behind and it's just a lot of snow dusty uh, kicked up, it might be a little bit difficult. So uh, not everything is black and white. Okay? Mm. So a lot of a lot of what I what I do is is um, sometimes I look at the skier movement. Mm. Sometimes I look at the ski actions because through experience, and this is this is where you 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 get to over time. I look, you know, when I looked at Patrick or Valentina there, the first thing that catches my eye is how they move, skier movements, how how they're standing on the ski and how they're moving, and you know, are they well balanced? Uh, are are they, uh, you know, any any hiccups? Is their upper and lower body separation? Are they a lot, um, you know? inclination to angulation is there good lateral movement is the body moving across is the skiing exciting 
And then I kind of go, oh yeah, because I had this mental image of what a perfect skier is. Yeah. And then and then I look and I go, well, look at those tracks. My God, they're they're railway tracks. They're carving beautifully, parallel tip to bottom. So sometimes I go the other way, right? And it's it's not, you know, for the purposes of learning, we break it down and we go, you know, ski the snow interaction, ski action, ski or movement. But in reality, it's all happening together. Okay. And so that, that, that's, you know, it might be a ball that is turning like this with the three, three components and decision making in between. And it's turning around like this. And I'm just looking at that and I'm going, yeah, I like that because, and then I can justify it through this model, right? But the process that you're going through is correct and, and taking it one, then the next, and then the next. And then over time, instead of, instead of having these three, three points and look, it starts to mesh together. And then your reaction as a teacher becomes quicker and more solid. Does that, does that help a little bit? Yeah, totally. I think uh, uh, I agree. I, I wish that I can I can reach that the uh, the level or the um, how to say the sensation you got. But uh, as yeah. you mentioned, that requires a, a whole lot of years of experience because you had that image of the perfect skier. That's very right. important. So so absolutely absolutely, you've got to watch a lot of skiers. And that's why I showed you the, the, these three, because one, uh, a couple of them were in slow motion, slow motion, to fast motion, slow motion, and then fast motion. Because in slow motion, you can kind of really, you can take this model and break it, the, the segments down a little bit and work, work through those. And then try to watch the same thing at, at regular speed and going and see, and then see if you can just take that ball and go, there it was. I, I got it. Are there any turns where Patrick or Valentina made a slight error? Now I've watched those video clips a number of times and, and they've cut out anything where they've made any errors, right? But if you watch a World Cup skier in a, in a woman in a GS, they're under such pressure where there will be an error because the turn shape changes from time to time. This was a very controlled environment. But watch those videos, use this model, work through it. And then, and then you might say, hey, I saw the skier movement go back the other way. What happened? And then come back. And then it, 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 it becomes this, this sphere that just gels together. And you don't have to break it down because you break it down. I think it just takes a long time, especially if you're on a level four exam. But watch the videos. And that's, this is part of the process while we did this tonight, right? Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, our Jasper camp, or we'll do more of it. We'll get video inside every day. We, your video, we'll, we'll pull up other videos of some expert skiers and we'll fine tune your eye and, and then talk about development processes and things like that. Yeah, perfect. It's, a, it's, a, it's something like a, uh, when you compare how, how uh, men and women uh, feel about a partner. They said uh, men can, men can, um, women, women can can express explicitly which part I like it and which part I like the second, but a man just say I just like it, I like you. <laughs> In the whole, the hard to hard to uh, I I can hardly divide it into which part I like the most. Right, right, but uh, yeah, it, it's. It's very good. It's very nice that the, for us to to have this uh, at least the, the direction of a vision, and that level when we reach that level uh, for teaching for assessment or even the self self coaching part. Yeah, we want to be there eventually. But um, yeah, I, I raise this because uh, I I see uh, uh, many many of uh, my friends or partners when they evaluate or uh, assess the assess the skiing for students or even between us, just start to give the suggestion, start to list one to number, number one to number 10, 
out of one run and you do from the top of the head and then till till the to the very bottom of the, the feet. So mm -hmm. that became okay, the student got overwhelmed. I, yes. I saw too yeah. much. Yeah, I saw too much of that example. So that that's why I, I try to structure it. And yeah. But eventually I, I yeah. glad to know that the I want to yeah, I want to learn how you think when you do the assessment. What what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, keep it, I think keeping it simple. Yeah. Like you in, in a in a very structured lesson, uh, which a, a level four or level three is, you want to have a very solid focus. You don't want to be bouncing around different exercises, one exercise, but you're you're diving in deep, right? So at level three level, you're diving in deep to that skill and making some corrections with that one skill that will have an outcome or a change on that, uh, how the ski reacts with the snow. And then, and then there's a subsequent change um, in the reaction that happens, which is, is the decision that you probably wanted. Yeah. At the level four, it's a deeper dive and a, and a bigger refinement. And in both cases, it involves the student in that, in that decision-making and in the outcome and feeling the change in that outcome, right? Okay, but, but you, uh, you know, watching, watching a lot of exams over the years, a lot of people, you know, try to use a, a shotgun approach rather than having kind of a, a targeted, targeted bullet on here saying that and keeping focus, it's, it's, you know, it's a long range shot and I've got to, I've got to get in there and, and continue to work it, you know, just prescribing. It, um, this isn't medicine. Uh, you know, th this is like surgery versus giving a pill. You know, I take a pill, you know, I, I, I don't do a skill like I take a pill and I'm better the next day, right? This is surgery that takes a couple of hours. I've got to get in there, you know, and I've got to slice the skin and I've got to move the nerve and then I've got to, you know, I actually have to put a tourniquet on so that I, the, the blood stops flowing and then I've got to find the tendon. I'm talking about my own surgery. I, I just, I'm not skiing because I had surgery on my arm, but that's what, that's what it is. A, a lesson is like surgery and you're getting in deep and then you're, you're finding the problem and you're making the small little changes and you're reconnecting, you're reconnecting how the brain thinks about the movement pattern and getting a new movement pattern. And then, oh, there's the new feeling on that snow. Well, I don't want to change the conditions too much yet. Get the feeling, get it regulated. Then maybe, maybe offer up a couple of maybe a little bit steeper. Maybe. I think uh, uh, your video is broke. Is breaking. Yeah, yeah, like that. Um, is there is there any other other questions? Can I take this down? Um, I've got that. Yeah, I just want to numbers. make share my res, you know, my observations. I think Otto, you started skiing at age of three, so your body nice. has the nice. wisdom. Your body has the wisdom, and you have deeper body awareness than us. For me, I started skiing at age forty. So sometimes I, I wish that I can do it, but I couldn't really feel the body. So that is very interesting. I think you are more like a feeler and uh, you feel your body well. And for us, I, I saw Lulu as well. He's a thinker. He needs to you know, get step by step <laughs> guidance and maybe can take a deeper dive to find you know, root cause analysis, but still we, as an adult skiers, they may have different paths of learning things, right? You know, that's Lynn, really, really, uh, really good point. Now, um, when, I, when, I, when I, over the years, my experience, when I train some people, you know, we talk about the, the, the feelers, the thinkers, the watchers, and the doers, and we're all kind of a, a bit of a mix of those things in there. Ultimately, ultimately skiing, you have to do it. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we talk about uh, when we teach 
to the student, you know, at the high level when you're teaching a lesson, you know, if you do a move like this, it's going to feel like that. Right. This is, so there's a, there's kind of a measurement, you know, a, a yes or a no, or how much did they get? Because then the student takes responsibility for the learning. That's part of that lesson process. But my point is, um, it's a little bit at the level three because you're bringing it up, Lynn, but more at the level four. To, and I think to be a high performance athlete in the majority of any sport, you have to be able to feel the movement pattern that you're going to make ultimately, right? And, and we're kind of leading you there. You know, did you feel a little bit of weight on the ball of the foot? Did you feel a weight back by the arch? Did you feel the skis grab and the pressure increase or did you feel it slide away? You know, and I'm sure if you're, you know, when you're, if you're playing basketball, right? And you, you shoot, do you feel the ball roll off the fingertips? Or, you know, when you, when you throw a baseball, do you feel your, your shoulder go back and then your elbow and arm come through there, you know, did, did the weight go from your back foot to your forefoot as you throw those, those things, they probably become subconscious after a while. But if you ask them, do you feel that? Or did you feel that, that, that feeling is the process to become an expert, expertly skilled athlete at the sport that you choose. Okay, like I'm, I'm learning squash and now, you know, squash is pretty good right-handed, but because my right arm had some surgery on it, I have to work with my left hand and I don't feel the things the same way. And it's frustrating, but I realize I have to, I have to learn that to get a little bit better. And I'm going, God, this is a learning process. I'm, you know, and I, I think about my students learning that, how to ski and I'm going, yeah, this is, and it's repet it's a lot of repetitiveness. And then I need, I need another lesson, another tip to, to go to that next step. Um, should we do, is there any more questions or should we do the deck for the Jasper camp? What do you think, Ben? Yeah, let, let's move on the deck, please. And yeah. So Lulu's got the deck, I think, right? Yeah. Lulu, Lulu do you? Share the deck for us. Can't hear Lulu. Sorry, yeah, get I'm, I'm on mute. Okay. <laughs> PowerPoint, I should share. Yeah. So, uh, Lynn and kind of the you know some other students and Paul and Barkley and uh, uh, Teamer and you know a bunch of other people kind of in our um, circle of, of Chinese friends and students uh, about hosting a ski camp and and uh, some people might wonder why I chose Jasper Alberta well Jasper is a great town uh, they're offering us uh, great prices. Um, you know, making it affordable, it's a, it's a little bit of ways away, but the skiing there in April will also be amazing. Um, you know, it's a, it's a good sized mountain. Uh, it's got a uh, good lift system, a good variety of steeps and uh, grooms, cruisers, bumps. Uh, so that's, you know, and the, the ski school director is very accommodating up there. He's, uh, he's going to give us a uh, private hill to do some gate training or race training brushes and and those now uh, you know in the academy in the third camp they do a timed brush course somebody asked me they don't do it anymore well they they still do it they don't do a gate training course but these courses help for skills yeah so Otto, here's a question uh someone would be interested to learn is level four getting easier or getting harder because uh, we noticed that there's no longer a requirement for the gate or, or, you know, for the racing part. And we also noticed that there are so many, you know, level four, uh, you know, get, so, so many guys got level, level four pins uh, this year. <laughs> so what is your view? <laughs> oh God, you, you put me in a corner, Lynn. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, you, you know, um, I, I love helping people reach their goals of certification, uh, level three, particularly level four. I, I think it's a it's a great standard to have, and then. Uh, you know, Paul and I, we would love to see um, some Chinese course conductors, um, you know, because pedagogy is and training others is, is a great skill. And, uh, you know, the Chinese community is huge. They're great people. They're excellent students. And, and I think not only in Canada, but also back in China, I think there's a need to, to have some really strong leadership within the ski community and, and there's no better way than to have a level four Chinese course conductor. So my dream would be to see somebody pass to level four and uh, hopefully we'll do whatever we can to, to help that. And this, this high performance camp, Otto's high performance camp in Jasper, Alberta, uh, April, the first camp is from April 4th to 8th and the second camp is from April 11th to the 15th. They're five days. You can do both of them um, on the weekends. You can practice or, uh, you know, I'm going to be available for a private lesson. Maybe Paul is too. We've got a couple uh, course conductors from um, uh, Marmot Basin, uh, Sophie Norton, Colin Burrow, and, and Jez will be assisting us as needed. Uh, we will be doing indoor sessions. I think I've, I've scheduled three per week. We'll have video, on-hill video, a couple times a week for sure. Um, if we can get a spot to watch it on-hill, we will. If not, we'll watch it again afterwards. But we're going to do some in indoor training. We'll cover off um, trainer development or pedagogy. We'll have a, a technical session. Uh, we're going to use, uh, I want to use Paul's next level skier book to assist us um, in our learning process, uh, along with um, the Alliance and some other videos that I've got. Um, we want to make sure we get the top uh, Chinese instructors from across Canada and, and, and maybe from uh, Taiwan, Taipei to come and, and be there. We want to create a supporting and, and robust learning, good teamwork, fun. We'll go out for dinner together, um, and then we, maybe we'll look at some other things that are available in Jasper, uh, either in the evenings or on weekends too, uh, to create some great teamwork. We've, uh, we've got each week is five days. You know, we'll start at 9.30 in the morning. We'll go to lunch, have a lunch break, and we'll ski another couple hours in the afternoon. Uh, and it'll be uh, intense. We'll push you, we'll challenge you, and we're going to have some fun. So let's go to number three. Um, why Jasper? Well, there's some powder in April. There's more sunshine. Uh, you know, if if uh, if I was to do it here in Whistler, um, ski school is going to charge me a little over eight hundred dollars a day, just for each for each ski pro. And so, they're not very accommodating, and, and tickets are uh, a little bit more expensive. They've in Banff or sorry, in Jasper, uh, they've offered me uh, a four-week pass there for, for my students for $550. So that's a, a really good price. Or there's a Marmot card. You know, you can, get, you can ski for a month at, at Jasper if you wanted to stay on right to the end um, for $550. And that's 28 days. So it's a pretty good rate. After I've done my camps, there's also a spring festival held by CSIA Alberta which I think is around the 20th. I still haven't got the details of that. Um, it's a great ski hill. It's big enough. They've got all the terrain we're going to need. And uh, there's a couple of awards that they've won. So that's why we're going to Jasper. And it's not that busy. And the ski school is going to treat us like gold. So number four. Um, there are the training fees. Uh, and if you're uh, level four, and if you bring a buddy and recommend a buddy, we're gonna give you $100 off. If you register before the 20th of March, it's $750 uh, 
um, it's plus GST because Alberta, they don't charge PST. So it's only the 5% that we have to pay the government. The hotel rooms, uh, Astoria Hotel uh, in uh, Jasper is offering us a deal. Um, their basic room rate is $115 a night and they're going to give my group, if you use my name, they're going to give us 20% off. Uh, I think they're going to give us 20% off food in the hotel as well. Uh, the tickets I mentioned that. Uh, if you buy the uh, Marmot card, if you're only there for a week, it works out to about $65 a day. But if you want uh, from the 4th of April to the 1st May, May 1st, they're giving us um, a four-week pass for $550. And then uh, transportation is available um, from Vancouver uh, through Chow. Chow, uh, there's this WeChat number there. If you have any questions for me on WeChat, uh, just you can you can locate me on WeChat if you don't already have me on there. It's Ski with Auto is my tag. Ski with Auto, all one word. Uh, there's also if you if you're coming from Edmonton or Calgary, there's a direct bus from the airport to Jasper. Um, Best value options, two weeks, 2750. Don't know what that's for, but I guess that's all the lift tickets and training or whatever, right? Um, but if you, if you, like $1,600, it's actually $1,500 if you book early enough. So it's, uh, oh, no, maybe it's $1,600. Yes, there we go. Two camps. That would be $1,500 if you book early. Um, next one. Uh, this is what the camp includes. So four and a half hours of instruction per day. Uh, top level four CSI ski coaches, video analysis, private training field for brushes, stubbies, gates, uh, bumps and off speed tactics and training. We're going to challenge you, the science and the art of skiing steeps. So we'll, we're going to try and take you around and explore Jasper. They've got some, some great steeps. Debunking the myths and trying to make it simplify uh, technique. Uh, teaching tips, training, and modern strategies. So we're gonna we're gonna have, like I said, three three solid afternoon training sessions, probably starting about four thirty in the town of Jasper. Um, uh, you know, if if you're interested in the level two or three exam, please let us know, and we can try to organize that. Uh, there's, like I said, there's, um, you know, anybody that signs up early. Uh, as well, I'm going to get them a, one of these books from Paul, Next Level Skier, special special promotion. Uh, plus, receive $100 off camp piece for each person you bring to the camp. So bring a couple people and save yourself a, a few dollars. Um, I should mention that um, it says here the book Next Level Skier signed by Paul. Um, you may not want to have your book ruined to sign by Paul. So, so that's an option as well. You, you don't have to have it signed. <laughs> signed by Paul. Perfect. <laughs> but but uh, it's nice to have that out there. Uh, I, I just noticed a question in the chat. Um, uh, oh. Sue is asking, how many students per instructor? Um, ma maximum seven. Maximum, maximum seven. So we hope, we hope to... Um, In three seven people. How many people uh, small, mobile, and a lot of attention? Uh, is that do we have any more slides? Are we done? Uh Shall we move to the previous slides? Uh, the previous one. So uh, I'm going to send it out. Here is a, a QR code. If you scan it, you will be into the group. We talk about specifically about this can so that uh, we can, you know, talk about logistic and, uh, you know, find your roommate and to find someone you want to capoon with. And yeah, so. Um, I'll send out this deck later, and uh, I would encourage you to scan this QR code 
so that we can share all the information uh, in the group. Okay. So yeah, there are other informations following on that with more details. Uh, yeah, so this is about, uh, you know, uh, the ski resort, the lift ticket, the hotel, and yeah, so all the details. And I'd like to, uh, sorry, just, just to add in, um, I've spent a lot of time in Jasper and I've, I've done a lot of courses there. And um, Jasper is a really special place if you haven't been. Um, it offers all varieties of terrain um, suitable to train level one to level four. Um, and it's, it's really a true ski town. Um, and, and, and it gives us the opportunity, which is very rare these days, to, to connect on the hill and off the hill. And, and, and definitely, um, as Otto said before, uh, Colin, the ski school director, uh, is very accommodating. So we'll have the resources on the hill to uh, really get down and, and, and get some, some work done and, and some really good training um, on a close, uh, regardless of size of group, um, very on a very personal basis. So I, I think it's a great opportunity. It's a great time of year and it's a great location. So I, I, I think um, uh, it's something that I, I personally am looking forward to. Okay, move on the next page. So we have all those uh, coaching staff, but I understand that if you got enough participants, Paul, you will get Masayu to join the crew as well, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that, that would be nice, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and maybe maybe Keemer too. And he, Keemer said, he, if, if I get enough people to get him there, he'll do a boot, some boot fitting uh, clinic in the evening as well for those that are interested. Mm. Uh, okay. Here, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go through that, but there's a sample of, a, of, of our five day plan. And of course, uh, you know, as we get closer to that and as people register and I talk to them, we will adapt this to whatever the, the needs are. So if some people wanna spend more time on practice teaching, we can get a group that will practice, teach, and work on that process if that's what interests them. Or with the trainer development, uh, preparing for the trainer development exam, we can get a group that works for that. So these are these are some of the options, and we're we're very willing to work with whatever the needs are of this this group. Is there, is there any more um, questions? You know, maybe. Um... I saw a question from Sue asking about the hotel price. Yeah, it is per, uh, per room with two, uh, we, we can you know, have two, two guys share one room. So average out it will be for each individual would be uh, 50 to $60, I believe. Yeah, per day. Yeah. Yeah, if, you know, once you if you take it $115 uh, a night minus 20% plus 5% you're you're probably a little bit over $100 but yeah if it's if it's two people uh, and you're sharing then it's $50 each. Yeah. I saw Shadow. Shadow said, uh, yeah, what's a good camp? Shadow, are you coming? Yes, yes. Yeah, so what I happened is actually for everyone that joined the camp uh, before, you know, February the 14th, they can nominate, uh, you know, one level for candidate to show their support. So whoever been nominated, Otto will be kind enough to waiver or just to give $100 coupon for them to treat with Otto. So this is actually a dedicated level for camp for us Chinese instructors, and we got the support from Otto, from Paul, and yeah, we would like to see, you know, more Chinese ski instructors into the level four camp next year. And so that you guys can lead us on our level three and we can, you know, cascade down to the level two candidates. So that's a, that's a plan. 
So who, for whoever are interested, uh, I think we, we really have uh, Paul and uh, Otto here, but if we want to chat in Chinese, we can have another uh, time that we can, you know, talk about it and uh, maybe ask if any suggestions uh, or ask from your side, I can, I'm happy to be the one uh, to coordinate this. Thanks, Lynn. Yeah. yeah. Any time, feel free to um, reach out to me on, on WeChat or email if you have any, have any questions. Okay, so Otto, here's another question for you. Yeah, so we talk about there's no level four, uh, there's no gate racing for level four exam. Why right. do you still want to, you know, those training in the agenda? What on hike does it? <laughs> um, <laughs> ra racing, uh, you know, when I, when I went back to our, our first conversation at the beginning here, I, I talked about skill development. And, I, you know, I talk about kind of the three core skills that we've got in the alliance and developing those skills. Racing helps you develop those skills. Um, it also kind of pushes you, pushes you your speed. It makes you turn in a place you're not used to turning. Uh, it makes you edge the ski differently, a little bit harder. It challenges you. It, help, it, it, it helps you develop your high-end performance skills. That, that's, what it, that's what it does. When, when we say we're going to have race training, if you're not comfortable in the gates, we're going to show you how to become more comfortable. We're going to show you a bit of the line, we'll work a little bit with the technique. Hopefully, we're, at the same time, we'll have, we'll have kind of a, a GS course, but we'll also have a corridor. And on, on the third camp uh, in the academy now, on the, I think on this, the second or third day, uh, one of the things that you have to do is you have to ski a corridor and it's, it's a eight or nine meter corridor and you are timed in that corridor. There'd be a certain amount of turns that you get and then, and then you're timed. And so they want you to kind of get up to speed and the performance level. So we want to try to put you in environments that develop your skills and maybe are a little bit uncomfortable. That's our plan. Yeah. Push, push our, to our out of our comfort zone, right? out of your comfort zone and to, and to develop your skills that's strictly what it is right and the race the race uh the race hill um is not going to consume the whole run so you might practice the race or you might practice the corridor is typically how i operate them I, I do them at worcester i train for the ski school there and then the rest of the run you might be doing medium-sized turns or you might be doing large size turns working on your skill set there or we might give you an exercise to do that will help your skills. Often on race training day, we're not at your side the whole time. Normally we're at the, at the bottom of the course and we may be doing video. You may come down and we say, hey, here's the video, here's an exercise. Then we might make a run with you and come back up and you do it again. And, and, and so it's, 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 um, it's, it's usually a great day because there's a lot of mileage. You'll be a friend or two and you get, a, you get a lot of skiing, a lot of miles with some good coaching in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, Otto. So, uh, 大家还有什么问题吗? 要问Otto的, 因为我知道他下边还有些安排, 如果没有的话, 我们可能就, 就要他走, 他, okay, so yeah. Uh, so, yeah. uh, yeah. Yeah. I said we're gonna we're gonna talk about the book, and I think this is this is uh, ooh look at that sign yeah. sign copy. Oh yeah, so my in, book has in, been uh... ruined, but with a with a very helpful tip because I send my videos to Paul, and he just sign on it, keep turning. So that I oh. yeah, Paul would turning. Never 
always here and you never sign mine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know what to say. I'm still thinking about what to say. So I, I, I promise I'll sign it, Otto. Um, keep sliding. <laughs> it, it, it keep sliding. Yeah. T- yes. Um, <laughs> um, I, I noticed something about the book, um, just sales wise. Uh, I'm not sure where everybody is, but um, if you purchase it off of Amazon.com instead of Amazon.ca, Amazon will ship to Hong Kong. So, so, so it's a little bit of a um, process yet. I'm still trying to iron it out, trying to get the book uh, available within uh, mainland China. But uh, Amazon.com will ship it, the physical print version, to Hong Kong, if, if anyone is, is there and interested. We've had a few purchases of people that have, have contacted me. And uh, uh, so far, we've, we've had good response off the book um, from, from everybody at, 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 at every level, from, from people who are instructors from level one, two, three, four. Uh, I, I've got some trainers who are using parts of the book uh, to outline their training sessions. Uh, I've got students and candidates who are level ones, twos, and threes who are using it to train towards their uh, certification goals, and just general members of the public who who. Uh, are, are just getting out of it uh, whatever they like, whether it's looking at the pictures or um, uh, reading in depth into to what's been written. So uh, just to share with you, the, the response of the book has been very positive. So, so to anyone who has it, um, I, I welcome any comments anytime, but, but uh, I'd just like to say thank you for, for picking it up. And, and I hope it's helping you uh, understand skiing because if we go back into our conversation here, uh, earlier with our <laughs> triangle of the skills framework, uh, one of the things that, that's really important before we get to the feeling phase of how to ski high end or any at any level, we have to understand what's going on. So through an understanding, one of my goals with the book was to um, speak to, describe of um, what it is that should be taking place. And, and without getting very fancy, hopefully those comments fit into that triangle somewhere, whether it's a body movement or a ski movement. And once that understanding starts to take root, then we start to develop some feelings and understand how we can connect the two of them. And then the, the graduation up to level three and four and even beyond uh, is just a growth of those two. So um, as you go out on your ski journeys and, and, and start working on the hill, uh, don't try to understand just maybe necessarily the feelings or just what's going on. Just try to connect the two of them and, and say, Hey, well, when I move my leg in the ski tips up, Oh, huh, okay. I get more grip. That's the beginning of the journey. And, and, and that understanding will grow as you ski faster, as you ski steeper, shorter turns, longer turns, etc. But um, anyhow, um, if you have any questions regarding the book, uh, I'm, I'm here and happy to, to answer them for you. Hey, Paul, I got the question. Where we are on the Chinese version? Uh, <laughs> I, I'm afraid I've got the same answer as, as the last time you asked me that. Um, still working on it. Um, I, I, I guarantee there will be a Chinese version. I, I can't mm-hmm. say when. Um, I would hope uh, within the next uh, half a year, mm-hmm. based on where I am. So there is a Chinese version coming, and it'll be av- available in print and uh, and digital as well. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna have to take a few copies over there next year when we go. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, yeah, that would be yeah. great. So next year we will have a Chinese version, right? Is that yes? Understood? Yes. Cool. You, you know what? Ninety nine point nine percent. Yes, by next year there will be a Chinese version. Okay. So if you need, uh, you know need us to do so, something that we can jointly develop during the camp so that we can speed up the process, let me know. I will call for volunteers so that we can work together. Well, thank you very much. And you know, that might set a goal for me to have something ready to look at uh, by the time Mm -hmm. the camps uh, uh, come around. So thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, make for some good discussion. Uh, there was a question just on um, on the chat. So we learn from one instructor all five days or from different instructors. Um, 
initially I thought it would be one instructor, but I thought it's a good question because some people like to, to you know, see a couple of uh, different coaches through that time. Um, yeah, I put it put it out there. Would you like to Would you like to split uh, between two coaches, or would you like to have one coach uh, provide your feedback there on the chat if you want? So my recommendation is that we got the WeChat group set up. Whoever registered, we can just get in, and if we have some ideas or ask, we can just put it through, and we can have a vote so that uh, yeah, to see what makes the makes sense for most of us, and we can put a request to auto, I'm sure that he can deliver it. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's, uh, you know, either way, there's there's great ben benefits to both. You know, it's great, it's great sometimes to have two different views on something, sometimes it's great, some people like getting the one coach and, you know, diving in deep over, over the five days. You know, I, I put two camps back to the back, hoping people would take both of them and then you're with one coach for five days and then you're with another coach for, for a different five days. But, but again, yeah, you know, go to the WeChat, put your thoughts in there, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll take a poll and see which way we should run that. It's easy to do. It's very easy to do. Yeah, and also I think we can just learn from each other. If we learn something from you know, Otto from Paul that I couldn't understand it, I would like to discuss with my you know friends so that they can help me to connect all the dots. And I will, you know, help me to understand further. I think I might, um, if I can, just add in there uh, on these types of camps and events and, and CSI courses, uh, the coaches um, share information as well. So if you were with one particular coach over a number of days, uh, there would be some discussion, uh, perhaps in the evenings or in the morning, uh, just about how each of the groups are doing, and, and we usually share that information. Um, to try to maximize the benefit that everybody gets out of it. So even though you aren't with someone, you're getting the benefit of whoever is um, coaching that event, um, regardless. Uh, you, you may not see that, but, but it definitely happens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If no more questions, I think Otto, I need to let you go. Otherwise, <laughs> you will be in trouble. Yes, yeah, it's uh, it's just about dinner time here. I gotta get gotta get dinner ready for the family. Um, but thank you, Lynn, for organizing this. Uh, Lulu, thanks for being the technical master. Paul, thanks for your uh, input. Um, as always, uh, excellent crew to work with. Uh, I really appreciate that. Thank you, everybody, for showing up and uh, being part of our our group. It's so good to talk to everybody again. Allow me to share the slogan that uh, we translated, Yu Xue Shen Gong Bai Tou. Originally said that we would like to, uh, you know, get our hair uh, snowy higher while, you know, skiing with a mountain, but we got a very, you know, inspiring uh, English translation is called Snow Pause, My Heart Soars. So I'm developing, uh, yeah, a logo on that. So it's well, it will be one of the souvenir that we are going to spread it. It can be a goggle sock or stickers that you can put anywhere, but just show your passion. Hmm. Okay. That's cool. So again, thank you everybody for joining this uh, New Year party. And yeah, I'll see you in April in Jasper. Okay, cool. Thank you, everyone. Nice to see thank you. you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.